Let's talk about the difference between models and reality. Reality is big. It encompasses everything. When a mystic drops into connection or a sense of the truth of reality, they fall silent. You just can't talk about everything. At that point, you talk about nothing. But we're talking to each other all the time. So what are we doing? We're parsing up reality into little bits that we can digest and understand. So let's call it, let's call that modeling. So a model is a simplification of something that's very complicated to make it easier to understand and communicate about it. The thing about models though, as simplifications, is that they're always missing most of the truth. That doesn't make them not useful, they're very useful. We couldn't live without them. Let's say a model for love. My love is like a red, red rose. Well, there are entailments to that model. My love is fragrant. My love is beautiful. And if you handle it the wrong way, you're going to bleed. Okay, so those are kind of the entailments of the model. My love is like a red, red rose. What if I said your love is like the, the grass in the field? Well, <laughs> It would be fleeting. It would be wishy-washy, blowing in the wind all the time. Right? That would be a model for, for, for love. It might not be a compliment. What about models for the body? Whenever we say the body is blank, we're, we're modeling a complex reality in a simplified way. Now remember, when you're modeling the body, you're going to identify certain properties that it has and forget about others, like my love is a red, red rose. So if I say my body is, and many people do, a machine, and it may be a fancy machine, but you say it's a machine, we call that the mechanistic model. It's very commonly employed in our textbooks. So the body is a machine is very useful. Think about knee replacements. If we didn't kind of imagine the body as a machine, it would be harder to saw bits off Hammer in, hammer in new joints and walk away from it in pretty good shape. So I'm not poo-pooing the mechanistic model, but if it's my only way of seeing a person, it's kind of a dramatic reduction of them. Do I really need to listen to what my lawnmower has to say? <laughs> no, just put the gas in, just do things, right? So we, we might not have a great bedside manner if you're, if you're modeling a person as a machine. What about the body is uh, an onion tree? That's what I say as an integral anatomist. I know the body's not an onion tree. What the heck is an onion tree anyway? It's like a, fan, it's like a, it's like a fanciful idea of, of the body being uh, consisting of a sequence of layers that also is penetrated by the branches of a tree whose trunk is in the middle. Well, that's a very ridiculous simplification of the body, but it's actually pretty useful in the dissection lab because it helps people identify textural differences as they're dissecting. And also, what's that, what's that river going through there? What's that branching looking thing? So we can identify the vasculature, the, the neural networks, uh, as well as the textural layers, all using that model as a starting point. Now, once you start dissecting, the model falls apart pretty quickly, but it gets you in there. So again, the value of a model isn't that it's reality, it's that it's useful. It's helpful. It, it, it leads us to successful surgeries for knee replacements. It leads us to um, making it easier uh, to kind of frame a dissection. But there should be no illusion that your model is reality. What about St. Francis, my favorite saint of all time? Uh, he's a, a 13th century uh, Italian mystic uh, St. Francis. You might know him as the guy in your garden, the little statue with the little brown robe dude with bald and a bird on his shoulder. St. Francis, he was much more than that. That's a model of St. Francis. He was a very complicated and interesting human being. St. Francis's model of the body was brother ass. 
body as mule. Now, imagine how they treated mules in the 13th century. Mules are already a little stubborn as it is. So if you consider your body to be just this stubborn animal that you need to sort of beat into submission, you'll have a kind of a relationship with your body that might be a little on the negative side, right? Uh, so St. Francis died at 42 years old, having flogged the mule unto death. He was blind from fasting, and he lay down on his mat and died while apologizing to Brother S. Right? What if St. Francis had modeled his body as a temple of the Spirit? He could have done that as well, in which case he could have found out that he could have gone into his body rather than beat it as an object that was other than himself. He could have gone into his body and, 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 and sought out the divine there. Why not? Body as a temple of the spirit. Body as a machine. Body as a mule. Body as an onion tree. All of these are simplifications of reality. They highlight certain aspects about the body. They miss out on other aspects. And I consider it really important for you to think about what's your model of the body. What's, my, what's what I've been doing? I'm trying to think, what is my model of the body? How do I speak to my body? And, and, and what, what do I miss out on with my model? And would I consider adopting a profusion, a collection of models, so that where one meets its end and is no longer useful, we can pick up another model and find it useful. Models shouldn't be dogmas, right? They're just tools. So just something to think about. The body is what? Thanks for watching. If you'd like to study more with me, go to gilheadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.